In today's blog, we are going to continue looking at the linking parameters page. This video will focus on the retract setting. The previous video in this series covered the difference between absolute, incremental, and associative, so we will only be looking at those parameters in respect to their effect on the retract setting. From the Mastercam help files, we can read the definition of retract. Retract sets the height that the tool moves up to before the next tool pass. There's also some extra information about retract's use. The retract height should be set above the feed plane. If you do not enter a clearance height, the tool will move to the retract height between operations. Also, if an incremental setting is specified, this will be relative to the top of stock value. Let's now make a few tool paths to explain these. On this sample part, I'm going to create a contour operation to cut the arc on one end. Notice I've chained the geometry at the top of the part. My default settings on the linking parameters page come in as shown. Make note of the fact that clearance is enabled and set at 2 inches absolute. The radio button for use clearance only at the start and end is not currently enabled. Retract is enabled and set at a quarter inch absolute. I will set the depth at negative 1 inch absolute and create the toolpath. The analyze toolpath function can be used to check the toolpath. We can see the start of the rapid movement at 2 inches in Z, and then transitions to a blue feed line at Z0.2. In the current toolpath, we are not seeing the retract position being used. This is because we are not making any moves to a next tool pass, as was described in the definition. We can see this next tool path behavior under a few different circumstances. Depth cuts, multipasses, and new chains within the operation can all produce the need for a retract. If multipasses are enabled for this path, the retract will be generated for the repositioning move from the end of the rough paths to the start of the finish pass. Analyze toolpath can be used again to examine the toolpath's position. The retract is taking place at 0.25 in Z. Similar functionality can be seen when using depth cuts. A word of caution when using incremental values with retract. Notice in the current toolpath, each depth cut is retracting to absolute 0.25 in Z. If we change this to an incremental retract, notice there are several rapid lines going through the part now. Simulating this part shows these moves as crashes, which they are. Here, the toolpaths are retracting incrementally from the last cut, which ends up being the toolpath's new top of stock for the next depth cut. Even though the definition seems to say that an incremental retract is based on the top of stock, which we have set to absolute zero, the top of stock within the operation is changing to generate the depth cuts. Therefore, we recommend using absolute or associative settings for retract values. However, there are situations in which using an incremental retract can be very useful. On this part, there are holes on different Z levels that need drilling. The features have been all machined previous, so conventional retracts would result in excessive air cutting for the three holes located at the bottom of the pockets. I have selected the geometry for the holes at the top of each hole in Z, setting the top of stock in the operation to an incremental value allows the position to be relative to the chain geometry's Z location. Remembering that an incremental retract is relative to the top of stock, and all of our current top of stock is relative to the chain geometry's Z level we can reduce the air cutting for this operation. In backplot, we can see the tool rapid to Z0.1 for this first hole, then feed to depth. Rapid out of the hole, rapid to the next hole, and then rapid down to negative 0.65, and then start feeding to depth. If we copy this operation and turn off the incremental retract and top of stock, this will drill all holes starting at Z0.1. We can then compare the cycle time of the two ops. The incremental retract ops estimate is 15 seconds, while the air cutting operation is roughly 30 seconds. Another option is to let Mastercam figure out where it can start the drilling operation from in Z. Instead of using incremental values, we can use stock. This stock can be either the stock defined in the stock setup, or it can be a stock model. I have a stock model created that represents the outer contours and pockets complete on this part. If I enable the use of stock, set the stock to my created stock model, and then set the use to both, 
This will generate both the start and ending positions for the toolpath. Notice the options on the linking parameters page are now grayed out. These positions are now relative to the stock model. The resulting toolpath is identical to the one using the incremental values. However, since the retrack is relative to the stock model, if I make changes to the stock model, the toolpath can be automatically updated to the new stock. Stay tuned for the next video, which will continue thorough examination of the linking parameters.